Chris with HobbyKing.com and welcome to the Turingy Mini Fabricator Setup Guide. In this guide, we're gonna be going through the setup of this printer. Now, unlike its larger brother, this one comes right out of the box ready to use. We just have some basic adjustments that we need to do to the printer itself and just hook up the, uh, the Bowden tube. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, first thing, we're gonna go over what comes into the box. So we've got our universal power supply, uh, USB cable, uh, a trial set of some PLA filament, some extra uh, paper for the print platform, and of course the user guide which we'll be following into this video. So the first thing we need to do is hook up the Bowden tube. Now when it comes shipped to you right out of the box, this is normally disconnected. I'll just disconnect it. And it's tied up right over here just so it doesn't get damaged in the, uh, the packaging or the shipping. So you'll notice right here on the end it has a small little o-ring. And what it does is right here on our extrusion motor, it just threads in right onto the side. Now it only needs to be hand tight, so you don't need to use a wrench on this. We're just going to compress this o-ring slightly. Now sometimes when you are loading up uh, filament, now that just puts in there and threads in. When you're loading up filament, you can't get it pushed through. It doesn't line up just, uh, just right. So you can go ahead and just loosen this up feed the filament through and then uh, help guide it through here and then just go ahead and thread that in after the fact. That's just a tip on this one. And, and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this on over and we're just gonna take a look at the bottom. Now the USB cable should already actually be connected uh, depending on the build of your mini 3D printer. But if not, just be aware here is your USB uh, plug. There's a slot cut right in the back side of this printer and it just plugs in right here on the side and that cable just allows it to, to sit right onto the back. And then right over here is our power port for our mains power, which is just a standard 5.5 uh, millimeter bullet, and that plugs in right over there. So it's pretty easy setup right out of the box. That's all we really need to do. At this point, don't plug it into your computer. We're gonna switch over to the computer right now, and we're gonna go through the setup guide for the repeater host software, as well as the Cura settings. So let's go ahead and switch over. Okay, so the first thing I need you guys to do is go ahead and download two files. One being Repeater Host, which is a software that we recommend to use with this printer. And it's cross-platform, meaning it's uh, good on Windows, Mac, as well as Linux systems. The other is the Cura configuration file, and that's available underneath the Files tab. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. So if you jump on hobbyking.com and take a look at uh, the listing for the printer and slide on down to right here where it says Files, if you click on this tab, that is going to be where your Cura uh, file set is, and you can just download that. We'll be using that in the second half of the configuration. The other one is the repeater host software, which is available in the manual. You can just take a look at that, go to the website, download the one that's applicable to your operating system. So I've already got that downloaded on my desktop, and I'm just going to go ahead and launch the program. So what we need to do is configure this to work with the Mini. So we're going to come right over here to the printer setting uh, icon right over here. Click on that and it's going to open up a window. So there are several tabs right in here that we need to just fill in some values. We've got connection, printer, extruder, and printer shape. If you take a look at your Fabricator user guide, it has screenshots with the required values and just go ahead and go through each of those tabs and get those filled in. Give me one second, I'll get that taken care of. Okay. All right, so now that we're done with that, make sure you click the apply button and then okay. So apply and okay. So at that point we have uh, repeater host configured to work with the mini. So what we need to do is uh, configure the slicer engine. What repeater host does is it's a real nice GUI and manual control interface, but it uses a slicing engine from several different other uh, programs such as Slicer, uh, Cura, and, uh, and a couple more. But what we recommend using is Cura. It seems to be a very solid slicing engine and we have a pre-configuration file that you can just quickly import and you're done with these settings. So what we're gonna do at this point is slide right over here on the right side of the screen and we have object placement, slicer, preview, manual control, and SD card, which we'll be going over in a second. Click on the second tab, which is slicer. You're gonna notice right here where it says slicing. Um, if it's a, a, a brand new install, it's gonna probably have slicer as the default slicing engine. Go ahead and just select the, down, uh, the drop down and pick the Cura engine for that. Um, next, what we need to do is click on configuration. Now this is where that other file that we downloaded is gonna come into play. That file is the configuration and all we have to do is import it directly into this, uh, save it and, and we're all set. So what we would do is click import and we'd go to the file that we just downloaded from the, full, the, the files tab, click on that, click open and what you're gonna notice is the name right over here on the left-hand side change, indicating that it's in there. And then just go ahead and click the Save button. 
At that point, it's done. The Cura is uh, uh, configured and we can go ahead and close out this window. Now we're done configuring the software and we're ready to start uh, controlling the printer, making sure the, uh, the initial Z setting is correct and getting the filament loaded up with that. Now, if you don't have access to the second file that we had on the files tab, you can't get it downloaded for whatever reason. We have all those settings available in the manual as well. So you can just go just like we did on the first one with the uh, repeater host settings, go through the different tabs and just type those values in as well. So it's not necessary that you have that file. We just made it real nice and easy for you. It's a quick installation. So first thing we need to do, if we did everything correctly, if we click on the connection button, it should connect to the 3D printer and turn green. So at this point, go ahead and power up the printer by plugging it into the mains and plugging in the USB cable to your printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just plug that on in. Now, if this is the first time that you've uh, used this or plugged this printer into your uh, PC, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna have to find the drivers and download it. So go ahead and give it about a minute to go ahead and do that configuration. Uh, I've already had one plugged into this computer, so we're all set. So like I was mentioning before, if, if everything has been configured correctly in the repeater host, we should be able to give it a connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here, and it turned green, which means we have a solid, nice connection. First thing we need to do is what's called homing the printer. And what this does is uh, reference the control software to the relationship where it is mechanically, or it zeroes it out or calibrates everything to each other. Um, so we're gonna slide right over here on the top files tab. So we've got object placement, slicer, which we were just in, preview, and then manual control. Go ahead and click on the manual control. Now I'm gonna talk about this page just a little bit. So right over here we have control and this gives us manual control of being able to move the bed around. This is Z, uh, allows the, uh, the head, the extrusion head to move up and down and this is our extruder which uh, controls the plastic. Now if you notice, my arrow is right here and as I hover towards the center of this ring, it's 0.1, it's 1, 10, and then 50. And what that is is denoting how many millimeters it's gonna move. So the further out we go and click it, the further it's going to move for every button press. And this is for X, Y coordinates, this is our Z and our extruder. Right over here is the current position of the printer, but notice how it's red. This is because we haven't done a homing or a calibration. Uh, as soon as we do that, it's gonna know its position and we're gonna get feedback from the printer that it's been homed. These are our homing buttons right here. We got X, Y, Z, and home. This one homes all three at one time. This is nice, it allows you to home a single axis, especially for the Z when you're doing calibration on your Z axis. But I'm gonna go ahead and click this one. Now the printer is gonna go ahead and move, so make sure all your fing fingers and objects around it are kind of moved away uh, because the bed does extend outside of the body. So it's gonna go through the home process. Okay, now the printer has been homed. If we take a look at the screen, now these numbers are in black and you're gonna denote the middle one Y is at 80 millimeters. The reason for this is if we're looking at the front of the printer from this side, uh, that the back left corner is our home position, but our origin or our zero point is actually the front left corner. So when you're looking at the model in here, this dot is equal to this dot or the, the front left of this. So it's just where the, uh, the micro switches have been placed. So that's why it's indicating that it's 80, mil 80 millimeters positive. So when it moves forward, it goes into the negative or back down to zero. So that's everything there. So now we have control over the printer itself. Uh, it's been homed out. What we need to do is just check our Z uh, setting. The Z is important for the extrusion head down to the printer platform. Our first layer on the printer platform is the most critical on a 3D print. If it's too close, we're gonna have issues with the print. If it's too far away, it's not gonna stick in here properly. It may come uh, loose or it may curl, uh, depending on the plastics and, and what you're definitely using. So we need to make sure that setting between the extrusion nozzle and the print platform is, is ideal. Now, if it's too close, what's gonna happen is it's gonna railroad the plastic, where the plastic is being squirted out and it's coming up and around the edges like this, and so you're gonna have like a, a railroad tracks. If it's too far away, you're gonna have a round bead and it's not gonna adhere properly to the bed. So in order to check this, so I'm gonna slide this right on around. And all we're gonna do is take a business card or a piece of paper, and we're gonna slip it between the nozzle and the print platform, the bed right in here. So it should slide just right in underneath, and you can feel it touch both at the same time. Now, if it's too tight or if it's too loose, there is an adjustment right here. I'm gonna turn it right here on the back side so you can see it. There is a screw right here, and if I flip it over and take a look at it from the bottom, here's the screw right here. And you can thread this up or down relative to adjust the print platform 
uh, to your z-axis right over here. Now, it's critical when you're making this adjustment, if you take a look at a clock and you, you denote each hour on the clock, that's the distance you want to move it each time, just one hour at a time in a full rotation. So if it was uh, too close, you just give it about an hour turn, check it again. Now, where I was indicating that you can just go ahead and click on zeroing the one axis, you don't have to re-zero all of them. You can simply come right over to the Z, click the home on the Z, check the adjustment, um, uh, do it again and just keep making that adjustment until you get that right perfect thickness right in between our Z axis. So the Z is set up and we've double checked that. It's an easy adjustment if it needs to be adjusted, but right from the factory it should be preset on that. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this back. We're going to talk a little bit more about the screen and how to load our filament up. So on this control right over here on our GUI, let's talk about some of these other ones. So first one here is our feed rate. This allows us to override our G-code and increase or decrease the printing speed. And that comes into play with different types of plastics and heats. Uh, some things uh, might actually print better uh, slower, so it allows proper time to cool if it's a very small uh, part. Um, fan, a manual fan on and off. Uh, this fan, let's go ahead and talk about that. Uh, it's because we're gonna heat the extrusion head next. Now the fan on this is the uh, cooling fan for our extrusion head. So it comes on any time the extrusion head is above 50 degrees and it turns off automatically below 50 degrees. Uh, the reason for this is that it cools the head down and doesn't allow that plastic to expand and cause jamming issues in the head like a lot of other printers have uh, or early on in 3D printing where you had a lot of jams in the head itself. So it's critical you do not disconnect the main power from the 3D printer after it's done printing until the fan turns off and this uh, definitely will prohibit you from having a jamming issue. So uh, the next is our extruder itself. Um, now this little dot right here is our uh, current temperature and this line right here is our target temperature, 190 degrees. What we need to do is what's called a preheat. We have to preheat the head in order to feed the plastic through and get it primed up. Uh, if we try to put the, uh, the filament through and get it fed all the way through, it's obviously not going to go through the extrusion head. So when we go ahead and start printing, it's going to probably print a few layers before it actually primes and starts coming out. So it's always best to load the filament and with a preheat and get it primed and through the system. Now, another critical thing we want to do is never touch the head when the extrusion hot, uh, is turned on and it's hot. It's obviously hot. We want to use a pair of uh, metal tweezers to get in there and remo remove excess uh, uh, plastic and, and clean it. Never uh, touch the extra plastic on that. So to turn these on and off, you're going to notice right over here, these are actually buttons. You can hover over them and you can see them change color. If I click on this, I'm going to do that right now, you're going to see the line disappear. You're going to see right over here, heating uh, extruder, and you're going to notice that this little dot right over here is increasing or moving up. And that's because this is our current temperature and this is our target temperature. When this one moves over to here to our target temperature, we're ready to go ahead and uh, uh, put the uh, filament in. So now that this is preheating, I'm going to slide this on over while it's doing that so we can talk about how we put the filament into the system. All right, so this is our extruder itself. It's actually using what's called a Bowden tube to feed the plastic down into the heating uh, extrusion head. And you can hear, you can probably hear, that the uh, cooling fan just uh, came on because we're above that 50 degrees. So the uh, plastic or the filament comes in via this side, comes up through the Bowden tube and out to our extrusion head. We have a quick release right here, which is really nice for feeding the plastic in and out. And I had mentioned before that you can disconnect it right here via your finger uh, that allow you to line up the plastic in case you're having some jamming issues um, on that. So we're gonna come up to temperature, which we just hit our target temperature. So I'm gonna grab our filament and just grab the start of it. There we go. and it comes in from the clamp side. So all we're gonna do is press the clamp, slide this in, line it up with the nozzle, and start feeding it through. Okay, now you can see right there it's jammed. I could wiggle this around and force it through like that. The other way to do is just go ahead and unscrew this and line it up and thread that back in. So go ahead and start pushing it through. You can see, actually see it through the bone tube coming through. And as it comes to the head, you're gonna feel it kind of stop. And I'm gonna turn it this way so you can actually see right over here. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and click up on my Z axis. I'm gonna move it up about 20 to 30 millimeters. Okay, so now that we're there, what I, you're gonna be able to see is as I push this plastic through the head, it's gonna start extruding out some plastic at the bottom. As soon as it starts forcing the plastic out, it's essentially been primed and ready to go. At this point, like I said, never reach in here and clean off the extra plastic. Just use a pair of needle plizer, uh, tweezers and just go ahead and um, remove that. 
That's it guys, this printer is completely set up and ready to operate. We are ready to bring in a model and send it over to the printer for 3D printing. I hope you guys like this user guide and definitely always follow our tips and tricks for the 3D printers. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you guys next time.